personal breakthrough secrets, three simple yet profound strategies that immediately bring you more time, money, love, and happiness. Okay, my friends, uh, we have a good chunk of ground to cover today. So quick question, and I want to make sure that you guys are all with me. How many of you here are actually ready for a breakthrough? It is time to turn a new chapter um, in the book of your life. It is time to step up. It is time to let go. It is time to um, make the changes internally, heart, mind, and soul that are necessary for the beginning um, of the next chapter of your life. Yes, it is time. <laughs> You guys are going to be fun. I, I see some things like, sure, if I have to, you bet. Okay, so uh, you know what? Give me, I, I'd like to, to at least imagine there's some enthusiasm around that. So give me a hell yeah. If this is really the time. Give me a hell yeah. Perfect. So what I want you to be clear is this, is our mission, pretty simple and straightforward at the Creator's Code, uh, and that is a picture of me. I'm not going to turn my video on because sometimes that makes it a little difficult for people in terms of bandwidth, is to heal the motivation structure of humanity so that we as human beings are not driven by fear, scarcity, and pain, but instead we are pulled by contribution, mission, and love. And I want to be very clear about this, is that this is one of those things that is... Um, <laughs> somebody came back. It's like, hell yeah. Why do you think that I came back? I want to hear this stuff again. Fabulous. Um, and I want to be very clear about this. I'm going to talk a lot about our motivation structure, the influence, the impact that it has um, as we go through this process. But please understand, if we mastered this one thing, that we were no longer driven by our fear, our scarcity, and our pain, everything in our life and in our world and in our universe will be different. So, I have a request and a bribe, and I want to be very clear about my request and my bribe. It is this. My request is this. Engage and participate. It's why I'm asking you questions. It's why I'm asking you to type in. It's why I'm asking you to respond. And if you're going to engage and participate, turn all of the other stuff off. Facebook, texting, the TV, all those sort of things. Close the door to your office. And I want to ask you to do me a favor and to do yourself a favor and participate until the very end. And uh, I have a bribe. And by the way, just to be clear about this, I am not above bribery. Years ago, when uh, my wife and I <laughs> first decided we were going to have children, it was like, our kids, we won't bribe them. They're going to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Um, not long after that, we were soon bribing them. So if I'll bribe my kids, I'll tell you straight up, I'll bribe you. And here's an exceptionally good bribe is that I will give you, if you participate in the state of the very end, a digital copy of my book, which is called Reframe Your Blame, How to Be Personally Accountable. And uh, this book is about one of the single most vital elements to human success and human happiness. And in fact, it's impossible to heal your motivation structure without actually nailing and becoming personally accountable. Now, I also want to address, I know that you think you already know that, okay? I don't blame other people. Of course you don't. Um, the reality is most people who are interested in this conversation, they are not actually in the process of blaming other people. They have actually started to blame themselves under the guise of, I'm being responsible. Um, so I just want you to be really clear about this, is that the vast majority of the world who's, who's done a little bit of personal transformation work is that they're not external blame victims in terms of he, she, yet the world have done it to them. They are actually self-blame victims. And all that has happened is we've shifted the blame from the outside to the inside. And while it can help us move faster and get things done, it does not lead to a joyful experience of life. So for goodness sakes, stay till the end. Read the damn book and find out what that means because I give you my word. I have tens of thousands of people who have bought that book, read that book, done that work, who say the book alone changed their lives. So here's my request. I will give you everything I've got to serve and support you for the next uh, 54 minutes. And my request to you is you jump in, you dive in, and I will give you a copy of my book at the end. So if that's a deal, uh, type in, you got a deal, and we will get moving and shaking. Deal, 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 deal. Oh, yes, and this is a little picture of the cover. Now, while you're considering if that is a good deal or not, um, what I want you to understand is this, is that it's not just my opinion that this is a good book. Um, this book, actually, I have uh, psychologists and counselors in Calgary who actually have this book as a requirement of their intake process before they take clients on. It is that good. Um, in addition to that, um, a couple of people who you probably recognize. On the left is my uh, friend Jack Canfield, who said this about the book. Um, Reframe Your Blame is a step-by-step -step guide that will help you to apply the first and most important success principle. Take 100% responsibility for your life. This book will raise your vibration, clarify your mission, and support you to genuine personal accountability. Jack Canfield and uh, Brian Tracy. 
This powerful practical book shows you how to liberate yourself from perhaps the greatest of all burdens to success. And I want to be clear about this. These are not the endorsements as often happens in the world, which is you write the endorsement, I'll sign my name to it, but I have no intention of reading your book. Uh, both of these fine gentlemen uh, read the book and gave uh, glowing reviews. And we've had long conversations about this um, and its relationship to the work that they do, which is all good. Um, what I love about a bunch of people is like, yes, you totally got a deal. I already have the book and it's still a deal. <laughs> okay, fabulous. I appreciate that. All right, gang. So breakthrough. We are going to talk about breakthroughs and we are going to create breakthroughs and I'm going to do my very best to serve and support you to do so this evening. And I want to be very clear about this. There's a whole bunch of different types of breakthroughs that people experience when they do our experiential work. So this is the work that we do in the gift. This is the work that we do in our online uh, training and programs, our home study courses. This is the work of the launch. This is all of those types of pieces. And I want you to think about in your life right now, I asked if you were ready for a breakthrough, but I'd love for you to actually type in and tell me and tell I should also, by the way, let you know that um, uh, my brilliant friend and associate Kelly is on the line. She's going to be helping you guys out. If you have any questions or clarifications or any of those sorts of things, she'll take good care of you. Um, but let us know specifically what kind of breakthrough you want, you require, you are ready for. So that could be make more money. That could be resolving conflicts and challenging relationships. It could be increasing sustainable success. And I want to be clear about sustainable success. The reality is most people's success is actually borrowed time, borrowed resources, uh, borrowed investment from other life areas. It's not actually sustainable because you can only um, tap into you know, the time with family or being a conscious parent long enough to start your own business. You can't do that forever. It doesn't work. And most people, that's how it goes about. Or it could be risking disapproval, absolutely saying no, getting and staying motivated, um, following your dream, finding and committing to the one. These are the types of breakthroughs that we hear about all the time. But I am curious about your breakthrough. What's most important? I'm just going to share some examples so we're all on the same page. Make money, uh, balance my antiques and crafts business and my blog. Nice. Balance is a huge deal. What other breakthroughs are you ready? Ready for uh, definitely... Uh, yeah, uh, definitely the challenging relationships. Fabulous. I'm going to start my own coaching business. Yahoo. Exploding industry, one that I'm a monumental fan of. What else? Absolutely. Heal relationships. Getting healthy is monumentally important. Especially, especially resolving challenging relationships. Absolutely. That can be one of the influence and the impact and the drain that challenging relationship has on us is really quite astounding. So what I want each and every one of you to do is to really be clear about what that is for you. Uh, the more you're willing to type and let us know, the more I can utilize it for examples and all those things as we go along. But I just want you to be super clear is that all of this and a lot more is possible. And I want to share a, a little testimonial that was given to me by a friend of mine, Joshua. And uh, what's interesting is that Joshua and I are actually now business partners, although he gave me this testimonial about four and a half years ago, long before uh, we were business partners. And I just think that it's an interesting piece about how things evolve. So four weeks after attending Jay's event, The Gift, I was hosting my first multi-day training course. In the two weeks leading up to the course, as I created, I barely ate. I spent my mornings puking in the toilet. I'm serious. I survived up boost for juice. The stress was the highest I has ever been. Without Jay's support through the process, I don't know what would have happened. But finally, I went into the event, blew everyone's mind, supporting them to get massive results in their lives, and I generated 47844 bucks for my business from that event. Thank you. Now, what I want you to understand is that that amount of money was more than he had ever made in a year up to that point, and he did it in a weekend. But honest to goodness, the money doesn't even mean a damn thing in this example. The reality is who he had to become, what he had to face in, his cell, in himself, which is that stress piece and you know, run into the bathroom, what he had to face in himself to own his power, to take the risk, to contribute at a level that was outside of his frame of reference is what really made that meaningful. And by the way, it's what put him on my radar for uh, becoming a joint venture partner at the beginning and ultimately becoming my business partner, uh, which is pretty astounding and amazing. So here's the thing that I want you to know is that I get these types of notes literally every single week. It's one of the greatest things of Facebook. Um, I don't ask for them. People just send them to share with me the details of how their life has changed. And it really is powerful and monumental. 
So those are just examples of breakthroughs. And I want you to know that you were in the right, right spot if you're ready to start a new chapter in your life. If you're concerned that epic change may be in your future, if you're looking to dramatically increase your energy, or if you're wanting to improve the quality of your relationships, if you have a passion and a gift that you want to share with the world, by the way, if, the, if you're in the, you know, I'm interested in starting my own coaching business, that makes perfect sense. You're in the right spot for sure. Or if you're in that uncomfortable spot, I don't know what I did there, but my screen jumped ahead. Or if you're in that uncomfortable spot of knowing the answers, but not truly applying those answers to your life, that can be a really painful gap. And bottom line, big picture, if you're just ready to step out of the ordinary and create the extraordinary, because let's be clear about this, that is what you were designed to be, is extraordinary. So uh, if you get and you know and you sense and you feel that you were in the right spot, just type in, I am in the right spot. Make sure that we're ready in all of those pieces. So if you're in the right spot, type it in. Now here's what I want to share with you very quickly is this. There is a foundational formula that we utilize in all of our experiential programs. Well, frankly, in every single program under the sun that we do. And this foundational formula, some of you may have seen before, some of you may have heard this before, but here's what I'm going to ask of you. I'm going to ask of you, and by the way, it doesn't apply just to this formula, because I know there's some people, actually, we have some grads on the line, we have some people who are uh, have been in the community for a while, we've got people who are in the Launcher Mastermind Boot Camp, so we got lots, so you may have come across this before. Um, what we're really talking about here is that all of our results, and this, this formula, oh, i got to back up. What I want you to do is I want you to listen through the eyes, I want you to... Uh, Listen through the eyes. That's a pretty neat trick, by the way. This this particular webinar is not in Braille. <laughs> I want you to listen with the ears and see with the eyes of a master. And there's a big distinction between a master and a beginner. And a master always asks this question. What is my next level of application? What aspect of my life could I do a better job of this? What is my next step in becoming more of this and embodying this idea in my life, in my world, in my business, with my kids, with my health, with myself? That's what a master asks. But you know what a beginner says? And it's what keeps them as beginners. A beginner says, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I read that in a book. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that on Oprah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been giving that advice to my friend for years. Those are the words of a beginner. So I want each of you to watch through the eyes and to listen through the ears of a master. What's my next step of application and integration? So here's one of the foundational formulas. And when I say one of, I do mean one of. We have a multitude of them, but this is a, this is a great solid piece, which is our results in life. The results that we are pleased with, we're proud of, we want to share with the world. And the results that we're not so keen of, that we'd like to you know, perhaps put underneath the carpet, we don't want to talk about, we sure as hell hope nobody asks us about them. Um, those results all combined, they are equal to three things. And fundamentally, three things only. And the first of which is our beliefs. Now, I want to be clear about this. And I'm going to define a belief because, or what beliefs are because we're going to talk about them a lot as we go through our, uh, our webinar and our training today. A belief is a thought or idea that I hold about myself or the world around me that I accept to be a statement of fact. So I'm just going to say that again. A belief is a thought or idea I hold about myself or the world around me that I accept to be a statement of fact. Now, give me a couple of examples of supportive beliefs. Notice I, I have it down here that, uh, you know, we, of course, have some positive beliefs. We, of course, have some negative or limiting beliefs. But what I'd love to hear is this is just give me an example of one or two of your most powerful supportive beliefs. So I'll share one uh, with me, uh, I'll share one of mine with you, which is I have a belief that says I'm smart. I can figure out damn near anything. Give me a book, give me some time, and I will figure it out because I have that capacity. Um, another uh, supportive belief that I have is that I am a kick-ass dad. I love my boys beyond belief. I do my very best to serve and support them to become conscious, independent, and contributing members of society. Um, it is something that I'm really proud of. So those are two of my supportive beliefs. I'd like everyone here, type in one or two of your most supportive beliefs. Do it now. I think very logically. Yeah, I'm a brilliant coach. I love that. And I can solve any problem. Love that as well. Very organized. I'm a great mom. I put my daughter first. I will push through. I'll make a list of three things I can do and then do one. Love that. Love that. Love that. 
I'll add to that. You know, I have a I have a belief that humanity is fundamentally good. We sometimes do cra uh, crazy things in terms of trying to get our, our needs met. I'm creative. Likewise, anything I want to learn, I learn quickly and well. Nice. I can have a great coaching business without a doubt. I'm an excellent writer, generous of spirit. Okay, I love the brilliance in this in this group. Yahoo. Now, I also want to just flip the coin a moment or two and talk about our limiting beliefs. Now, first and foremost, is that how many of you, um, how many of you are already conscious and aware of some of the beliefs that have been limiting, blocking, or getting in the way for you? And if you've been, uh, if you're aware of what some of those are, just give me a hell yeah. I'm not going to ask you to necessarily share them here. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. And let's define. Um, what a limiting belief is and a limiting belief is any belief thought or idea that holds us back or blocks us from creating the experiences and the results that we want in our lives simple as that and here's the irony to this and we do much more in-depth work with this but the irony of this is is this fundamental truth is the instant that we learn a belief it supported us in some way shape or form but here's what occurs is our circumstances change we change our relationships change um, the world changes, but we still cling to these old, outdated ideas. And what once supported us as we become wiser, sharper, more conscious with more resources actually begins to limit us. And I'll give you an, an example of that, that uh, I, I love how this is phrased because it is so true. Is that for many of us, this very second in our lives, our greatest weakness is actually nothing more than one of our most significant strengths turned up too loud. Our greatest weakness right today, this instant, is nothing more than one of our greatest strengths simply turned up too loud. Now, quick little question. What percentage of our beliefs do you think we are conscious of? Meaning that we can articulate them, we can have a conversation with another human being about them, we can explore the, the structure and uh, the impact and influence that they have in our lives. So I want you to pick a percentage of our beliefs that you think you are conscious of between zero and 100%. And just to be clear about this, no right, no wrong, I'm just trying to get a sense of, of your, uh, your perception of self and how that plays out and all of those sorts of things. Type it in as soon as you've got it. Sue says 10, any other points of view? 80? 50, maybe 40, maybe 50, 80. I see a couple more coming in, but they haven't shown up yet. I can tell that it's coming. There we go. 70, I'm not sure. Conscious of would be small. Yes, it would, uh, Tom. So here's, here is, it's funny, because the most commonly bantered around number of what we are conscious of is 10%. Now, there was a book written by a guy named... Um, Chad Helmstetter, it was called Choices. Now he said that uh, the most conscious people on the planet, the people who are really moving and shaking, the people who have access to resources and capacities of our, our human experience that most people have, they're not 10% conscious, they're the grand total of 12% conscious. Now, people on this call are clearly much sharper and wiser than that. You, me, the people online, we're probably sitting at like 40, 50, 60. <laughs> I, by the way, I so wish that was true. Now, by the way, any of you have a little bit of a skeptical brain? I have a skeptical brain. And, um, you know, let's be clear about this. What we're talking about is the difference between conscious and sub and unconscious. And the, the definition of something being in our subconscious or unconscious is that we don't know that it's there. So if we don't know that it's there, how the hell did they count them to get the ratio to say that it's like, oh, it's 10%. And by the way, I've been doing this work for over 27 years. I have over 40,000 graduates, and I have done my very best to answer that question, and here's what I can tell you. No one really knows. No one really knows. But I can also tell you, in terms of doing this for 27 years, I have 40,000 graduates, dedicating myself to discovering me. I can tell you that 10% for most people is highly optimistic. It's highly optimistic. And that's a little bit on the scary side, because what that means is that there's 90% at the sub or the unconscious, that is really doing a tremendous amount to drive the results of our lives. But most people still try to focus around this little bit that we're actually conscious of, and it doesn't make the changes that we want. Is why if any of you are genu genuinely interested in actually evolving, it has to include a process that taps into the less than conscious. Because reading a book on its own just ain't gonna do it. Just talking about what is at, uh, you know, the forefront or well, not even the forefront, but just within our awareness isn't going to do it. We have to dig deeper. So we'll talk more about that in a moment or two. Now, in terms of this formula, 
we get enough beliefs along a similar topic, along a similar vein, we begin to develop what is known as an attitude. And the best way to think about attitude is this. It is simply this. It is the emotions that we have attached to a place and a person, place, circumstance, situation that is how we feel. And I want to be super clear about this. Um, our attitudes, for sure, combined with our beliefs, dictate the third part of this equation. And that third part is, of course, our behaviors. Okay, I want to get my pen going here because there's a very important part of behaviors. Now, when we're talking about behaviors, most people, most people think about these are the things that we actually do. But our behaviors also include those things that we say we're going to do. We know we should do. Perhaps we even told somebody we were going to do, but we do not. So it's what we do and it's what we do not do. And those things combined include our behaviors. Okay? Now, let's be clear about this. Our beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors, it is these three things combined that determine our results. Now, most people just focus here. Like, if I could just do a little bit better job, that would be all well and fine. Then... When this fails, and it inevitably does, it's like, well, you know why that fails? Because you had a bad attitude. You didn't think about it the right way. You didn't feel about it the right way. You weren't inspired enough. You didn't manage your state properly enough. You got too sad. You got too disappointed. You didn't take your medication. There's always some reason why the feeling wasn't aligned with the beliefs. But you know what? Nowhere near enough time is actually spent at the root of this, which are what are the fundamental beliefs? What are the fundamental assumptions? What are the fundamental filters that actually give birth to the attitudes and dictate the behaviors or lack thereof. So I want to be super clear about this. All of these three things, somewhere along the lines, we have learned. Okay? We have learned. And I would love to know where do you think we had the most influential um, learning in terms of our beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors? Yeah, and a couple of you are just saying, yeah, I agree, that's me. I agree that that's how it goes. Some of you have a slightly different perspective. It's all good. And I want to be clear about this. Is It is not my objective uh, in today's uh, training to change any of your minds. I just want you to think about some things differently. Because I tell you what, after doing this for 27 years and 40,000 people, um, I got a couple of, <laughs> I got a little bit of experience in terms of what works and what doesn't. Yes, parents, home, peers. Significant others, absolutely. All of those things are true. Give me a couple of others. Where else did we learn these things? Media plays a monumentally big role. Religion plays a monumentally big role. Culture, yes, absolutely. For those of us that have spent time in different areas of the world, society, our culture plays a monumentally, monumentally significant role. Okay, so here's my point to this, is that we have learned them. And here's the part that I want every single person to begin to play with this idea is that number one is that if in fact we are going to change the results in our life, it is imperative that we become aware of our beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. And please hear this, not just what is operating at the conscious, but what is operating at a less than conscious. And in the gifts we provide, well, there's literally 33 different experiential activities designed to give you a glimpse into your sub and unconscious, see what's going on. So we've got to become aware of what is going on there. And now the next piece, and this is vitally important, is has anyone here ever heard this, ever heard this story or this, this particular framing, which is, you know what? It's like 90% of the battle is awareness. Once you become aware, you're 90% of the way there. You're almost done. You just got to really work on that awareness thing. If you've ever heard anything along those, along those lines, give me a yes regarding awareness or yes awareness or some version thereof. Just let me know. So yeah, yes. Okay, so here's what I want to say about this, and I want to say it as clear as I possibly can. That is the biggest load of bullshit in the universe. It is so not true, it hurts. And I do not want to underestimate the power and the influence of awareness, because in the absence of awareness, we just keep doing the same thing over and over again. But to say that our awareness is 90% there is absolutely not true. <laughs> Somebody says, haha, yes. Because we don't begin to even cross the halfway mark until we take that awareness and we make a clear and conscious choice that says one of two things. I am either going to reinforce the beliefs that I currently have. I am going to actually strengthen them. I am going to do something. Get my pen going here. I'm going to do something to make them even more powerful because these beliefs serve and support me. These beliefs have created amazing results in my relationships. These beliefs are moving and shaking. So when we make that choice, now we're starting to make some progress. 
Or alternatively, we say, you know what, that belief is totally not working for me. That belief is blocking, hindering me or getting in my way. And only when I make the choice and I put time, effort, energy, resources, a plan, support, and a process behind it, do we have a snowball's chance in hell of actually making a change. It's only when that happens. So in my humble opinion and in my experience, it is not until we make the conscious choice to put support in place that we get halfway there. So I hope that makes some sense because I just, you know, over the years have been getting a little grumpy at that. That's like, oh, well, now I'm aware of the belief. And because I'm aware, I'm from this point forward, just not going to choose that anymore, which is fundamentally inconsistent with the wiring of our belief system, which I'll share more about momentarily. So you've got to make it the choice and you've got to put some work together. So does this fundamental formula make sense? Because there's one key last piece I need to share with you. The point is this, is any belief, attitude, and behavior, no longer how, no matter how long you've had it, no matter how many times you reinforce it, no matter how deeply ingrained it is in your heart, mind, and soul, you have the power and ability to relearn. You are not stuck with it. It is not who you are. You are not your beliefs. You are not your results. You are something far greater than that. And we've got to start putting the beliefs in the perspective of what they are. Nothing more than tools. Tools like our sight, tools like our language, tools like our physical bodies, tools. And our beliefs have designed and developed to help us navigate our way through the world. They're not good, they're not bad, they're not right, they're not wrong, they're just tools. And if in fact you have been trying to, you know, uh, <laughs> screw, a, screw a Phillips head screw, drive, screw into, the, into the wall using a sledgehammer, you know what, it just probably means that the tool needs to be adapted. We need to put down the sledgehammer, pick up the proper tool for the job. And that is really what we do in the gift, that's what we do in all of our experiential programs. So great, this all makes good sense to you. Let's get moving and shaking. So I've got to tell you one more key piece about human wiring before we dive into our three secrets. So every single one of you has heard this, I am certain. Human beings will do more to avoid pain than to pursue pleasure. Now, if you have heard it, um, or hell, even if you haven't heard it, <laughs> that's entirely possible too. If you believe this sentence, just type in, I believe. Just type in, I believe. If you believe this sentence, humans will do more to avoid pain than to pursue pleasure. And by the way, a little pop quiz on that note. Um, who popularized that particular statement? I believe. No, never heard it. Yes, 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 yes. I believe. See if anyone remembers who, who you know, talked about it more than perhaps any other human being on planet Earth. That was my friends, Anthony Robbins. Now, Tony Robbins, there we go, Joyce got it. Um, so I actually believe that it's true, but that it is incomplete, okay? And I'm gonna say what I believe the entire statement is. As human beings will do more to avoid pain than to pursue pleasure if they are unconscious. And I don't mean that from a self-righteous stand. I'm talking about if they are unconscious of what their unique gifts are, what their passion is, what their mission is on planet Earth. In the absence of being clear about why you are here and what you are up to, then frankly, there is nothing else to motivate you except fear-based motivation um, of fear, scarcity, and pain. And here's the thing I want you to recognize and to understand. is In the absence of knowing what our mission is, why we're here, what our unique contribution is, in the absence of that, we as humanity fall to our fear-based motivation. But here's the son of a bitch to this, and I want you to understand this, and I'll talk much more about it as we go through, is that our fear-based motivation has damaged our capacity to create and to be free. And I want to give you just a brief example to get you thinking about this. If anyone here has ever had this experience, which is inconsistent motivation, so for example, um, if any of you are entrepreneurs, um, if you've ever had inconsistent cash flows, like you set a goal and it's like, you know what, I am going to earn X number of dollars in 90 days. So I'm going to go earn 50,000 bucks in the next 90 days. And while you are working towards that goal, man, you are on fire. You are moving and shaking. You are moving mountains. You are creating magic. And then what transpires is that at the end of the 90 days, let's imagine that you made 53,000 bucks. It's like you actually exceeded your goal. You rock star. But you notice that at the end of that 90 days, it just seems like it's really hard to pick up the phone and it's really hard to get much done and it's really hard to sort of get back in the groove of things. Uh, conversely, you know, another example of that is anyone who's ever, you know, set the goal to get into, I'll use my wife's phrase, to get into the skinny jeans. 
And it's like on the way to your goal, it's like you've got you know three pounds down, nine pounds down, twelve pounds down, fifteen pounds down. It's like poof, you're in the skinny jeans. And then suddenly your motivation to actually take care of your body, uh, to maintain that weight, just completely goes to shit. So if you've ever had any of that type of experience, give me a hell yeah in the little dialogue box. Because I want to give you a little secret: is that inconsistent motivation, or another way of saying it, your inability to maintain your motivation, particularly after you have accomplished a goal, is one of the loudest pieces of feedback in the universe that you are actually still motivated by fear, pain, and scarcity. And I want to be very clear about this, is that the pain of not fitting in the skinny jeans is actually the motivation, not the actual desire to be in the skinny jeans. And here's how you can tell, because based on results, your motivation evaporates as soon as you fit in the skinny jeans. There is no more pain. I'm actually there. Therefore, I cannot maintain my motivation. The same is true of the pain of, uh, you know, I had to earn $50,000 in 90 days because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to pay my mortgage. I got behind on my bills. I got to get caught up. There's a whole bunch of fear, pain, and scarcity attached to it. But once it's resolved, it's like, hey, there's nothing to worry about. I actually have the next month's mortgage payment in the bank. I can actually sit back a little bit. And if we can't maintain our motivation, then it tells us that our motivation is not the creation of the result, but the avoidance of the pain. And if that makes sense to you or is beginning to make sense to you, give me a gain, a hell yeah. All right, so here's the big idea. I fervently believe that we as human beings are equipped with the single greatest tool in the universe when it comes to conscious creation, and that is our belief system. That is our capacity to create. That is our capacity to future cast. That is our capacity to solve problems. That is our capacity to use our unique passions and gifts to create meaningful results. And that's what our belief system is. Uniquely encoded for you. Uniquely encoded for me. But the truth of the matter is that the vast majority of humanity doesn't have a freaking clue how to actually use that tool. And it is exactly like this picture. And I so love this picture because I really think that the ladders in this case, time and again, are our beliefs is the use of our belief system. We could, with any one of these little ladders, pop across that wall and actually be able to move and shake in our life and in our world, but we take the tool and we stack it in completely inappropriate and batshit crazy ways, and then peer over the corner of the wall going, oh, I wish I could have what was on the other side. If only there was some magical way to actually climb up against the wall and get myself over it. If only, if only, if only, while we're sitting on the very freaking tools that would change our lives. Now, you can tell I get a little bit enthusiastic about this. Um, and it is simply a function of, number one, my dedication to the process. And number two, the freedom that I see in the hearts, minds, souls, and eyes of people who go, oh my God, it's been within me all the time. I just need to lean this particular ladder against this particular wall and I'm free. And that's what we help people do. All right, so on that note, who here is ready for the number three way that is simple, that is profound. It is a strategy that brings immediately more time, money, love, and happiness. And if you are ready for the number three strategy, I need to hear a I am ready. Yes, me, ready. Yeah, that's only about half of you. It probably, I guess, isn't that important. We could just skip over this part, maybe. <laughs> All right. Here it comes, my friends. Let's roll. What? <laughs> you know I'm teasing you, right? Okay, here it is. Accept the illusion. Now, oftentimes when I share this with people, it's like, illusion, what the hell are you talking about? Why would I accept what illusion? Here's the reality, is that if we are willing to simply hang out in this one fundamental truth, which is this, as human beings, we are all fundamentally deaf and blind, and we can't see all of what is going on. We don't know what all is going on, and we might as well stop this insane freaking battle about, I'm right. Yeah, yeah, you have an opinion, but it doesn't really matter because I'm right. And let's be clear about this. Your, de your desire to be right is deeply encoded in your belief system because your belief system is trying to keep you safe. But in trying to keep you safe, it has made up this bullshit story that it is always right. And it is this fundamental truth, our commitment and our dedication to believing we are right about our particular view is the fundamental drive that gets in the way and stops us from creating. If we could just take two steps back and say, hey, look, I acknowledge and understand that I am actually 
um, not seeing all of these things accurately. I don't even have all of the information, but I am open to discovering. I'm open to exploring. I'm open to testing. I'm open to trying. Hell, I'm open to being wrong. If we could just take that step, everything opens up. Now, I just have to share this with you briefly because I so love this little drawing and it says so much. So first and foremost, over on this side here, over here, this is the electromagnetic spectrum on this side all the way up. You'll notice there's a little break because it is uh, otherwise proportionally, it wouldn't fit on our page. And this is sound frequency. And again, you'll notice it starts here. There's a little break because it wouldn't fit on the page. And what I want you to understand is that all of the rest of this space, so all of this back and forth, all of this up and down, this is what we can prove actually exists. We can measure it. There are tools, there are resources, there are processes to make sure that this is in fact part of reality. It's just part of reality we can't see as human beings. Here's what we can see in here of the reality of our universe. We get to see this itty bitty, teeny tiny, little fraction, tiny, minuscule, frickin' fraction of what actually exists in the universe. And at the very same time that we can prove that this is all we can see, this is all that we can experience, all of the rest of this is actually happening around us. And at the very same time, we just get to see this teeny tiny bit. We have most of the people running around the world going, I'm right. I know how this goes. Now, it's bullshit. It's how we're wired, but it's bullshit. It doesn't work, but we're still attached to it. But please understand this. This is all that we can actually physically see in here. And then there's a whole other problem, which I'm going to tell you about in a moment or two. But it makes it easy when you see it in this, uh, in this uh, structure. It makes it pretty easy for me to begin to acknowledge it's like, wait a second. There's a whole lot more going on in the world than what I think is transpiring. So what I want you to understand is this one fundamental truth. Is that we exist in an illusion of our own making. We exist in the illusion of our own making, and let's go to the next step. And the less attached we are to being right about it, the more joyful and easier it is for us to create. Um, if any of you have uh, read any of Byron Katie's The Work, I love this line of hers, which is this, every time I argue with reality, I lose. And if it's not already clear to you, most human beings are in an epic argument with reality. Uh, it is called resistance. It is every single time that we utter the words, that, I wish it wasn't like this. The lineup shouldn't be so long. The economy should be better. The NDP government is wrecking the universe. Trump's an asshole. Like, what you insert the blanks. It doesn't really matter what it is. But every single time that we are in resistance to what is, we are arguing with reality and we can't win. So, next piece is this. This little drawing here. In terms of accepting the illusion, I want you to share when you can actually see the horse. So there's a little drawing here. Just say, just type in horse when you can see it. So if we take this fundamental idea that we're all fundamentally deaf and blind, and then we take this next step to it, which is this, is that we are meaning makers. Our belief system has to make up meaning so that we can navigate our way through the process. Um, has anyone here, by the way, read the book Freakonomics? And Freakonomics is a really uh, powerful book, and I love it, and everyone in the planet, in my humble opinion, should read it. But here's the fundamental essence of it, is that it is case study after case study after case study of human beings tying cause and effect together, and time after time after time, we are wrong. As human beings, we completely suck at actually understanding cause and effect and the interrelationship of cause and effect, simply because we don't get to see the whole picture. So I strongly recommend that you see it. Um, and by the way, uh, Sue had just said, yep, had to see the perspective, uh, had to change perspective before I could see it. So let me just draw this for you in terms of the horse. So this, by the way, obviously in terms of the frog, here's the frog's eyes, there's the frog's mouth, all the rest of it. But now if you start to think of it as those are the nostrils of the horse, the mouth of the horse, here are the ears of the horse, and this of course is the eyes of the horse, then suddenly, you can see that it looks like a horse. Now, same picture, just perspective. Now, here's the reason why I want you to just consider this thing about Freakonomics. And I could give you a multitude of examples about it. But the big picture is this. We as human beings are like a prism, meaning that 
what occurs is light comes into our particular prism and it comes out our prism um, in, you know, if, if this was actually a real prism, it would come out in the colors of the rainbow all broken down. But the truth is, in our life, light comes into the prism and it comes out in the two or three colors that we think are supposed to come out. We actually don't see, we don't uh, let that happen because our belief systems are actually deletion and distortion machines. And we're going to talk about that more in a moment or two, but I want you to understand that we are deletion and distortion machines. We only see what fits in our context. Another way of saying that is there's that old saying of, I'll believe it when I see it, which is actually completely bass backwards. It's not true. Is that we can only see something once we believe it. So our belief system filters out what doesn't fit. It's the reason why if there's a traumatic experience and three people witness it, we get three different perspectives or three different descriptions of the event. And it's not because people weren't paying attention or because they were lying. It's because they literally saw it and experienced differently than other people did based upon their belief system. So here's an assignment that I want you to play with um, as a result of doing this training tonight. It is this. To begin getting more what I'm going to call unattached to our stories or unattached to our perceptions or unattached to the meaning that our belief system makes up and start preceding that process with this. The story I'm making up about that is. So it sounds weird. It sounds funny. But actually what it does is begin to acknowledge the truth of how you're wired. So if you have a circumstance and a difficult uh, relationship, as many of you did at the beginning, it's like, well, the story I'm making, about, making up about this difficult relationship is that he or she doesn't respect me or that they don't love me like they once did, or perhaps they don't find me as sexually attractive as they once did, or perhaps they don't actually listen or care about me. Whatever the story is, it is a very interesting process to articulate the story that your belief system is making up about any particular result or experience. So if you're willing to do that, I'm going to ask you for the next seven days, Start having that dialogue both to yourself, well, the story I'm making up about this is, and if you're brave enough, actually say those words out loud to other people when you're having coffee, when you're having tea, when you're talking about anything. The story I'm making up about this is. So try it on for size and see what transpires because the honest to God truth, just adding that little prequel to your sentences, your judgments, and your perceptions opens up a whole other realm of thought and possibility. So if you're willing to give that a shot, give me a hell yeah. If you're willing to do the assignment for the next seven days, use this phrase. The story I'm making up about this is. Um, I, another version of that, by the way, that uh, is used in one of my mastermind groups is my hallucination about this is. Um, but it, it actually nails what's really going on quite powerfully. So that is hell yeah. I'm committed. Beautiful. Love that. I'll blog it. I love that. Okay, so moving on. I'm going to recommend a book. I think every human being ought to read it. It is uh, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And uh, he, by the way, lost his entire family in, um, in uh, concentration camps during the Second World War. Went on to create an entire body of work called Logotherapy, which is astounding. And it boils down to this. When I accept that I am in control of making meaning in my life, I'm free to choose consciously meaning. Con I'm free to choose Conscious meaning that supports me, inspires me, and moves me forward. That makes a positive difference in my life and the world. And good Lord, if he can do it after losing his family there, so can you. And it's well worth the experiment. Um, incredible man and awesome book. Absolutely, without a doubt. And Elizabeth was just saying, yes, my, my version of this is, my fantasy is. <laughs> Sorry, Elizabeth. That takes me down a completely different road altogether. I'll have to steer clear of that one. <laughs> but that could be a lot of fun. All right, gang. So number two. The number two simply a profound strategy that immediately brings you more time, money, love, and happiness is this. Discovering your framing and your filters. I'd said this before. You were a deletion and distortion machine. And until you can understand what your deletion and distortion process is, you're frankly stuck in a bunch of these same old perceptions. So... The reality is this, that the discovery of your framing and your filters requires assistance. It is exceptionally difficult to do on your own. It's a little bit like you can't see the forest for the trees. And this is the power of a transformational experience, like the gift, which I'm going to invite you to, um, or having a powerful coach. And most of you have heard this, but I want to repeat it again, is that being a human being is a little bit like this. Each of us is trapped in a box, and we can't get out of the box. 
but it's not that hard to get out of the box. It's just that the instructions on how to get out of the box are written on the outside of the box. And we've got to work together and we've got to say, hey, buddy, could you, you know, from where you are in your box, could you see out of your box and actually read the instructions to me? And if you do that for me, I'll get out of my box. I'll come over and I'll read the instructions for you. And as soon as we start collaborating and seeing one another in our own patterns and our own invisible to us traps, things get a whole lot more interesting and fun. Okay. So I want to just have a little bit of fun with you on that note is that one of the most dangerous and limiting filters in the universe is these two words, I can't. And the interesting piece about this is that, remember, our belief system is designed to protect us, designed to keep us safe. And one of the greatest ways it does that is by doing its best to remove anything that could harm us, anything that we might fail at, anything we might get judged at, anything that might jeopardize our success in life. So our belief system actually unconsciously goes and creates a meaningful and powerful excuse that is designed to keep us stuck. And it's like, I can't because I don't have enough time. I can't because I don't have enough money. I can't because I'm not smart enough. I can't because I have got kids. I can't because I don't have enough support. I can't because you insert the blanks. But here's the crazy thing about this is when your belief system finds an excuse and I can't that works, what occurs is it keeps recycling it over and over and over again. Every single time it thinks you might actually begin to break free. You might actually begin being on the edge of creating real change. You might actually have an opportunity to step past some of these old limitations that have actually been keeping you safe. There's an ancillary benefit. And it begins to recycle the can't. And here's the crazy part about this. It's a little bit like Microsoft Word, you know, copy and replace, is that once an I can't gets in there, honest to goodness, our belief system accepts it at face value, even in the most ridiculous of circumstances, even when it's not freaking true. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Everybody here is going to choose three numbers between one and 10. Okay. Three numbers between one and 10. And I'm going to ask you just for fun and entertainment to type in those three numbers between one and 10. And uh, what I want to do is this, we're going to have a little bit of fun with our excuses and our I can'ts. So you type in your uh, numbers. I'm going to go uh, six, four, and two. Okay, six, four, and two. And uh, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, because I want to always, you know, serve and support you. So if you need a new excuse, I thought that, you know, it, you know, cause sometimes we just come up with, you know, not quite enough bullshit excuses to keep ourselves small and trapped and stuck in our life and in our universe. So here's what you got to do. I said six, four, and two. So you got to count down in terms of the lead in. All good excuses have three pieces. They have a lead in, they have a perpetrator, and they have a delaying factor. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You're, I'm going to read you mine. You're never going to believe this. One, two, three, four. The offensive line of the 76 Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> two, tried to kill me. That'd be way more fun if it, if it was the, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders tried to kill me. I mean, but anyway, you get the point here. And so for fun and entertainment, whatever the numbers are that you pick, I want you to read off the, I want you to, I want you to make sure that you get your excuse because I would hate for you to go through this entire process and not have a meaningful excuse to keep you small, safe, and stuck for the rest of your life. I mean, that would just not be quite right. Now, obviously, you know I'm being a facetious ass, as I often am. Um, but when you look at the excuse creator, and you seriously look at your stories and your excuses that you've been using to keep yourself small, the reason why you haven't taken the big risks, the reason why you haven't had that meaningful conversation with your loved one, the reasons why you're not doing six or seven figures in the business, the reason why you haven't gone back to get your master's, the reason why you're still a little overweight, the reason when you start looking at those excuses, you know in your heart that they are as ridiculous and as vapid as this silly thing. <laughs> Hey, fun, I got a hickey. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Godzilla ate my homework. I mean, it's ridiculous, but honest to God, I want you to, to seriously check into how does this work, okay? Um, all right, somebody said, ask if they have a copy of this JPEG. Yeah, you can totally use it. I don't know how you're going to get a copy of the JPEG, but I will uh, I will uh, post a, make sure you guys get a replay and those sorts of things so you can jump in and, and recreate in some way, shape, or form if you, if you so choose. But I trust that my mocking makes some sense to you. All right, gang, we're getting to the home stretch here, and I want to focus on the number one, simply a profound strategy that immediately brings you more time, money, love, and happiness. It is this. It is to heal your motivation structure. 
So how many of you have learned to make things harder than it needs to be? Okay, how many of you have learned to make things harder than it needs to be? And just think about it from this perspective. If you're moving along in your life, and honestly, objectively, if there was an easy way, and there was a hard way, you would find a way to go the hard way. Even if somebody dragged you down the easy way, you would like sneak off and go back and find the hard way because that is what you are more comfortable with. Oh, good God, yes, somebody says. <laughs> okay, so here's what I want you to understand is that if you have a penchant for making it hard, and by the way, I totally get this. I grew up in Saskatchewan. If you have the capacity um, to speak to yourself in what I'm just going to call not just negative, but sometimes it is unbelievably mean and abusive, like to the degree that you would never speak to another human being like this. You would never let another human being speak to you like this, but that is part of the conversation that happens in your own uh, head. That is like unbelievably powerful. And it is feedback that your motivation structure is in fact wounded. Now, I've already talked to you guys a little bit uh, out of order in terms of the, the, where'd my pen go? the carrot and the stick. And this is that whole idea of maintaining motivation. If your motivation comes and goes, if you cannot stay motivated when you are at your ideal weight or when you have some you know, extra cash, which by the way, a little sidebar to this, is none of you should be trying to be debt free. Um, that particular strategy is, again, a pain-based motivation. Uh, if you're being inconsistent with your self-care, what it really genuinely means is that what you require is support, structure, an environment, and a context to heal that motivation structure, get perfectly clear about what your mission is, what you want to con contribute, and what you love, and orient your life and resources around those passions and gifts. And it is only when that happens that we actually create these meaningful experiences and results, and we feel great at the same time. And I want to be very clear about this. It's entirely possible to create rock star results and actually still feel hollow, empty, pissed off, annoyed, something's missing. I'm just looking for that one last thing. You know the stories that, that actually happen. And if any of those things are going on, the truth is this, you must, honest to goodness, if you're going to really have peace, joy, meaning, you must heal that motivation structure and join, and I want to be very clear about this, the tiny fraction of people. Um, that are in that that are in the spot that are motivated by what they are moving towards. And I just want to clarify: Are you saying that get away from pain-based motivation and create support-based? Hell yes, Tom. That is exactly what I'm saying because pain-based motivation is unsustainable over the long haul. Um, so the carrot and the stick, Eileen. I'll just say this clearer: is that there are two ways to get ourselves moving. There is you know there's old thing of the mule. So there's a mule trying to uh, you know, you're trying to get the mule to pull the cart. So you can dangle a carrot in front of the mule's nose for them to try and go and pursue the carrot, or you can take a stick and and beat the crap out of them trying to get them to move. And the reality is this: is that most of us deeply ingrained, we'd like to say that it's the carrot, but most of us it is the stick. And we must 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 evolve that process. I hope that makes sense to you. All right, gang. So. Another way to say this, and it's just another way to look at it, and I'm going to do this quickly, and gang, I just want to acknowledge that uh, that we're going to likely go about six minutes over. I'm going as fast as I can, gang, but I want to, uh, I'm just hustling as fast as I can. So this is about motivation, and if you were to think about this as a scale, is that at the very bottom of the scale is rock bottom. And in fact, you know, if you've ever been in some 12 step programs is that they actually wait for people to get to rock bottom. And this is that spot where there is absolutely nothing else. It is the worst it has ever been. There's nowhere else to go. The only thing I can actually do is to get myself to put down the bottle or stop using cocaine or leave my sugar or whatever it is. They wait for rock bottom because their motivation structure requires it. Okay. Now what's interesting about this, is that this is a tough experience. Not a bunch of our, uh, of our people on planet Earth are in this spot. But here's an interesting thing that I want you to understand, is that most people that you see in the world that appear to be highly motivated, moving and shaking and doing cool shit, they are actually operating at about a minus five. And what that means is this, is that I'm not dying and I'm not in rock bottom by any stretch of the imagination, but I have enough fear in me to get my ass moving and to do whatever it is that I want to do. Now, in the old days, what's interesting about this is that 
people would come into our courses, the gift, the launch, uh, 3C. And it's like, great, I'm highly motivated because I have this problem. And they're motivated by solving the problem. But then they get to this spot here of they've solved the problem. So there's little or, man or manageable pain. And the irony is they think they're done. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm all good now. It's not bleeding anymore. I'll be fine. And it's like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Because the best analogy I could give to that is that that's a little bit like this, is that somebody wants to go and learn how to play baseball, for example. And it's like, great, we get their glove on and we play a couple of them. They, they're not dropping the ball every time. And then what we actually do is we get them ready to play in a game. We put their they, – they, they can actually catch. They can actually bat. We put their, their – uh, what do you call it? Their baseball suit on and we get them out into the dugout ready to start the game. And just before the game starts, they say, oh – it's all good. I'm done. I don't need to play the game. Now that I can actually catch the ball and I can, I'm, I'm actually wearing my baseball suit, that's as close as I need to get. And that drives me crazy because the real work is just beginning. We're just about to get into the game. We're just about to create. We're just about to get up to the plate to actually hit a home run. You are not done when there is no pain. You're just actually at the beginning of the space where we can actually create something meaningful. And by the way, getting from zero to five, super easy. Getting from five to eight, not so tough. But I'll tell you what, the eight plus, that's where the real game is won or lost. And it's one of the things I love about being able to coach Olympians. And I've had the pleasure to work with, and I still work with a variety of Olympians, including gold medal winners, because they get that this is the spot, frankly, where most of the work happens. Right here. This is the dedicated direction of my energy to create something meaningful, significant, and amazing. And here's the truth of the matter is that you cannot do this when you are motivated by fear. You cannot do this when you're motivated by pain. And you cannot do this when you're motivated by scarcity. It's not possible, it's not on the menu. So if you really want to play your A game, if you wanna tap into what your capacity is on planet Earth, you have got to give up this old, unconscious, low level, unsustainable bullshit. Straight as I can say it. All right, gang. So here's what I want you to do on that note is I want you to come and attend the gift. The gift is one of the most meaningful, powerful experiences in the entire universe, and it will transform your life. And who attends the gift? Every single human being under the sun, every walk of life. So here we have uh, oil and gas accountants. We have a woman who survived cancer. Here we have a, a lawyer and an oil field worker. Here we have a mom who uh, is a stepmother and uh, foster care as well. Here we have... Here we have a couple of entrepreneurs. Uh, we have a professor who teaches at a, a British Columbia University, early childhood development. It's every single walk of life. Um, here's a lawyer, a doctor, an oil field worker uh, celebrating somebody's win. It is every single walk of life. And what people create in the gift is all kinds of things. And by the way, every single thing I'm about to share with you is on our feedback forms, not just made up. It's like people wrote this. Um, so a dear friend of mine pursued professional golf at the age of 35 and actually won his flight and I got to watch it on television. Uh, pretty astounding. And people say you can't start that late. Um, people have started families, opened an orphanage in Uganda, written books, overcame depression, saved marriages, met the one, set and enforced boundaries, lost uh, over 100 pounds and have also made the final 10 pounds, uh, have stopped self-sabotage, started a band and began playing professionally, sailed around the world with family. And by the way, that was a, a Calgarian who sold everything in the universe to go on this adventure, healed broken families, people have divorced and separated with dignity and respect, quit jobs that weren't aligned with who they are, moved to Mexico to recharge, created financial freedom. Now this and a whole bunch more. But the big question that I have for you, and this is what I was asking you at the beginning in terms of what is the breakthrough, is this. What are you excited about creating? Not what do you feel burdened by, what do you feel like you should do, what do you feel like you're obligated to, but what are you actually excited about creating? And that could be anything, financial freedom, your ideal body, support and connection, your own business, an amazing relationship, contribution to family, friends, the world, or commitment to lifelong dreams. Whatever it is, that is what I invite you to play with in the gift. Because the truth of the matter is this, is that you can knock this out of the park. Yes, that is Andrea. So what I want you to be very clear about, oh, let's go back, is that the reason the gift works is this one fundamental truth, which is in the absence of support, environment always wins. And what you may not realize is that you have unconsciously created an environment internally, your beliefs, attitudes, behaviors, externally, 
your relationships, your job, your home, your community. You have created an environment, and that environment is designed for you to be right about what you already believe. And if you want to shift what you believe, honest to God, it takes support. No ifs, no ands, no buts, every single time. All right, so I want to read this to you. It's a long one, but it is so significant and cool. And if any of you uh, read or saw one of my posts recently on Facebook, which was uh, Medicine Hat became the first city in North America to eliminate homelessness, um, Marina actually played a role in that, which was very cool. And again, this is just one of those notes that came to me on Facebook. And it's, hi, Jay, I hope all is well in your world with, and that you and your lovely family are enjoying health and happiness. I wanted to let you know that things have just continued to take off in mind. And you may know that I helped develop Calgary's 10-year plan to end homelessness. Well, as a result, I've participate, of participating in that, I've been able to travel to the U.S. six times in the last year to research innovative and best practices around the issue. I'm meeting with the mayor of Victoria in two weeks to help advise his city's development of 10-year plan. She also met with Medicine Hat. That hadn't happened yet. Um, I was invited to sit on the advisory committee of the National Conference on Homelessness and have just been recruited to be the new VP for the Calgary Homeless Foundation. Now, what I want you to understand is that when she walked through the doors to take the gift eons ago, um, it was $997. She was a social worker, and she split that up into a multitude of payments, and it was not an easy thing for her to get to. Okay, So I need you to understand that in terms of this next line. Now, she says, I'm making more than twice the amount of money I was just two years ago. I'm in the six digit br digits, brother, uh, and I feel like I'm in a position to really create some large and systemic change in Calgary. Last four months, an innovative program I started here in Calgary has successfully housed over 40 absolutely homeless and deeply impoverished families with private landlords, and we think we may be able to end family homelessness in the next two years. I honestly believe it's the learning I did at the Creator's Code and the continued learning and application of the concepts of accountability, choice, authenticity, and courage that provided me the catalyst I needed to launch my own self into serving at a level that really allows me to live into my joy. Cheers, Marina. Now, I just want you to understand that that's just one example of tens of thousands. And I use it just because she's just one of the coolest people in the universe and makes a mon like her own process has transformed the lives of thousands has created a model that cities all over North, well, frankly, all over the world are doing their best to copy. So the point is this, when we truly give ourselves to what our passions and our gifts are, miracles are possible. So here's what actually happens in the gift. I'm going to hammer through this quickly. The first day is we focus on awareness. We need to know how am I wired? What do I believe consciously and subconsciously? What are my negative loops and procrastination that stop me and get in my way? And what are the 12 pillars of conscious creation? And we begin to uncover what I call the clues to your mission. Because if you don't know that, we can't heal the motivation structure about what we're moving towards. Then on date, and by the way, I, should, I need to address this. I'm getting the cart in front of the horse. I need to, you to understand that there is a multitude of personal transformation programs that don't work. And I'll tell you two of the biggest issues is that one of them is the process is purely intellectual, meaning that we're going to work on the distinctions and the right language and the right word, and that's going to transform our lives. And a purely intellectual process doesn't get to the unconscious beliefs and doesn't have the emotional charges necessary for change. Or alternatively, that the, the programs are so experiential and are so, I'm going to use the word woo-woo, that there isn't a cognitive frame for them to exist within. And I believe that the gift and the launch and the programs that we run are the best combination of developing the solid cognitive foundation that makes sense, that is based on science, that gets your brain going, oh, okay, I can actually play with this. And then there's also the experiential component that helps you get it, heart, mind, and soul. And it is that balance that makes all the difference in the world. So jumping on to day two, this is framed around the single, one of the single most powerful tools in the consciousness area. It untangles you from the past, separates you from your story. It clears you of negative energy and it frees you to consciously create your future. After day two of the gift, you'll no longer be able to BS yourself. You'll always ask the questions from a space of elevated consciousness that moves you forward. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but it will knock your socks off. I give you my word. That's all great. That, those two days, by the way, are better than almost any other program I have ever done in the universe, but there's a still an entire day because you've got to redirect that energy in space. And on day three, this is all about creation. What are you going to create in your life? How are you going to be and what are you going to do differently? So this is clarity of vision. It is tactical and it is practical action that releases limiting beliefs, that gets your needs met in clean, clear ways and creates momentum and energy that is necessary to break free of the old patterns and consciously create your life.
and we will provide you all kinds of support tools, resources, and processes that will help you build the support structures in your home, in your life, in your business, and to sustain yourself for your vision of your life. Like this is one of the most important pieces in the universe. And you know, I love all of this process, but truly, this is where I have the most fun because this is where we get the people who, uh, you know, to the baseball plate with the bat in hand, with the support to knock some home runs out of the out of the park. And that's how the, the gift works. So just to review that, day one, discover your wiring, what's really motivating you. Day two, interpret and reprogram your unconscious limiting beliefs. Day three, creation, directing your talents and gifts to create your ideal life. So I do want you to understand about talking about investment because there's a bunch of ways to do this. And uh, some people's like, I just want to work with you. And that's a possibility. But honest to God, I am booked up like mad and I couldn't even take a new client for about the next 90 days. Um, now, if you're interested in getting on that waiting list, just reach out to the office. We'll help you out. But here's how that looks. 10,000 bucks. You can do private one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. We do a strategy day. We'd send you on your, on your way. Or you could do the live three-day event, which is the gift. That's $997, um, best deal in the universe. And we also have a home learning program for $497. It is all of the core concepts, tools, and ideas from the gift um, in a, delivered online through this very cool you know, private portal with exercises, activities, and processes that is stunning. And that's $497. Because I understand, you know, the truth is, for some people, traveling is a royal pain in the ass. It just doesn't really work. I totally get it. So that program is a 12 module video training and workbook that teaches you all of these core principles and you'll learn exactly the same tools, process and perspectives we covered in the live training. Now, please understand, it's not the same as being there live, being there live. There is this magic that happens in the presence of other people who are committed to their transformation, but at least it gets you the tools in your hands so you can start playing with it. Um, now, that home study program has a whole bunch of quick start videos that support you in this process and then the 12 modules. Um, and it is exceptionally comprehensive. Um, not a replacement, but at least it gets you moving in the right direction. So here's the big question. What the hell should I do? And the answer to that question to me is you should get registered for the gift. You should get registered for, um, you should get registered for whatever it is that's going to serve and support you the best. Now, you, get, you can get started with the online and quick start program, uh, get yourself booked for the gift. For goodness sake, bring a friend, have support in your life and all of those pieces. But here's what I want to let you know. We have a super de duper special offer for you, which frankly rocks, is this. That creation acceleration home study program, it's worth $997. And I want to be clear about this. When I say worth, that means we've sold it for that. This is not one of those things that's worth $17.2 million. But today, these are real prices that real people have paid, not once or twice, but in our cases, thousands of times over the past 27 years. Now, there's also this thing called the gift private members area, and that's worth $19.97. It includes a program called Clear, Complete, and Create. That was a coaching program that sold for over, I think it was $4,000 back in the day. Um, you get the power of mission. You get 10 actions to create momentum. Uh, live the 12 pillars uh, hypnotherapy audios. A digital workbook with all of the handouts and all of those pieces to keep track of. Um, and then there's the three-day gift transformational experience. And if you take action today, please, this is not a standing offer by any stretch of the imagination. Here's what transpires is that you can get, and by the way, that's all just a hair under 4,000 bucks. You can get all three of these today for 497 bucks, for $497. That is absolutely stunning and a killer and fantastic deal. So quite literally, you get the home study program, which, at this moment, we have discounted $497, so you pay for that, and you get all of the rest for free. Now, to do that, all you need to do is go and visit truelifemastery.com and um, click on the button, get yourself registered. We'll make certain that you get, number one, a welcome call from one of our team members. That'll be Rob or Matthew. You'll get that in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, in addition to that, if... Um, uh, in addition to that, you will also get your access to the online resources materials right away. Just want to share a couple of other little testimonials. Melanie Hayden, one of the sharpest people in the under the sun. Thanks again for all that you do. Purchasing your package and attending and participating fully in the three creators code classes I've taken this year was the best investment I've ever made in myself. I'm bowing down to you as I write this. And if you know Melanie, she's not a woman that bows. I truly deeply appreciate the gifts that you share with us, the tools that you give us, and all of the heart and soul you bring to your work in tremendous appreciation. And just to be clear again, 40,000 graduates. The most consistent feedback that we get is, oh my God, I wish I'd done that earlier. So going back to that little uh, bullshit excuse creator, um, I want you to just 
truly and genuinely consider what are the excuses that are hanging out. It's like, I can't because of this, I can't because of that. Because the honest to God truth is, if you are ready for a breakthrough, you've got to do something different. If you are ready to step up and transform your life, you must do something different. If you want to actually shift your business, yourself, your relationships, it is going to take someone from the outside reading the instructions on how to get out of your box. And that, my friends, is what the whole process is for. Okay, so let me tell you a story and then we'll cut, cut this thing. Um, we'll end this thing. So I came through the doors of the predecessor of the gift at the ripe old age of 18 turning 19. And it was absolutely clear to me that I wanted every single person I loved to participate in this program. So I literally have no money in the universe. I am a student, um, you know, living on student loans, doing all those things. But I knew that this would change my life. I knew it would change the life of my family. So here's what I did. I made this offer to my family is that any of you who are willing to actually come and invest the time, you can stay at my place. I will pay for the course. I will do anything under the sun. I just want you to have this experience because I think it's going to make a radical and dramatic difference in our family. So as a teenager and a early 20 something, um, I made payments at times for 12 to 18 months for my mom to take the course, for my sister Lynn to take the course, for my sister Deb to take the course. And I ate macaroni and cheese because that's how important it was to me. And what I can tell you for certain is that the trajectory of our lives, the closeness of our family, the healing that transpired with our parents, I don't believe could have happened in another way. And it was simply the greatest thing that has ever happened in my life. It is that TSN turning point. And for me, this one piece has been one of the most important in the universe. In the same way, when I say I wanted everyone I loved to take the course, at that time, I defined who I loved as my immediate family. Today, who I define who I love is humanity. So my invitation to you is handle whatever considerations are there. Take advantage of this absolutely stellar offer because it's off the hook. Um, this price point, just to put that in perspective, is that I paid $597 in 1980. 86 to participate in the program. So you got to find a way, you got to handle your considerations. And remember, above all else, you deserve to live your life from a perspective of love, contribution, and mission. You are far too wise, you're far too conscious, and you are far too significant to still be motivated by fear, pain, and scarcity. That's just outdated silliness. So from the bottom of my heart, I look forward to serving each and every one of you in the course, in the program. Uh, get yourself registered, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Hey, Jay Fazette again. Um, this is an addendum to the video describing what actually happens at the gift and what you are going to get out of it. And uh, this is related to the payment and the fee and how all of those things are going to work. And um, there's something really unique and amazing that is going on here. And uh, I'm just referring to a, a post that I had made here. Because this particular program, which is happening in Calgary, March 13th to 15th, is actually um, incredibly special and unique. And the reason it's incredibly special and unique is that we are calling it the Robert Moody Transformational Scholarship. And uh, Robert was a grad of ours. And I'm just going to show you some pictures of him. Um, uh, he was a, a tall, big man, had a crazy sense of humor, a booming laugh. Um, <laughs> and was quite enjoyable. And here's the reality is that Robert passed away um, a few years ago and he left uh, the Personal Best Scholarship Fund a substantial amount of money. Um, substantial enough that we have the capacity to give away um, over a hundred seats in the gift. Now, the gift, also known for some people as Personal Best Level 1, in terms of years gone by, it has been rebranded. And uh, he gave this incredible gift to us. Now, there's a couple of things about this. Um, I did this post, I think you can see it here. Um, I did this post originally November 30th of 2019. Um, literally overnight, uh, we had 32 participant spots filled up uh, and our team is already in place. And uh, you can see just in terms of activity on this, 109 comments, 71 shares. Um, people really get behind this particular project. And um, here's how this is gonna work. 
you simply go to the link, which is attendthegift.com, and you will uh, put a seat deposit down for $197. Now that seat deposit says you're going to show up, that we can count on you. These are uh, exclusive spots. This event is happening one time, so this isn't cyclable or changeable. You only get your $197 back when you show up at registration. If you choose not to come, I'm sorry, too bad, so sad, uh, you've taken somebody's spot, frankly. Um, so here's the thing, we, I believe, have about 50 spots left. And we are just starting to actually do this official promotion. Um, the Facebook post obviously got a lot of action out of it. Now, there are a couple of things. The Personal Best Scholarship Fund is aimed at helping people participate who traditionally wouldn't be able to. So this is aimed at new people coming and participating in the gift. Now, we've had a ton of people who are uh, past grads or what we would call re-audits wanting to attend the event. And frankly, we would love to have you back. Um, content has been uh, a little tweaked and updated. Hell, you're not the same person that you once were at the time. So please come back. But I do need to be clear about this is that the scholarship funds don't apply to you. Robert gave this money for the intention of spreading the word, into uh, uh, serving and supporting people who have not yet had a, let's call it a, a consciousness or enlightenment experience, so to speak. So if you're re-auditing your $197, that's your fee to come back and participate. If you are new to this, your $197 is 100% free. You put your seat deposit down, at registration, you're gonna pick up your $197 check, and all is good. And we are going to give you three days of the most meaningful and significant um, work under the sun. So, simple as this, I would act fast. The spots are going to go incredibly quickly. You can see here, um, uh, you know, 71 shares and 109 comments. People uh, are really getting behind this and we're only at a spot of about 50 spots left. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly contact any of our customer care people um, and I'll put some of that information on the page where you're going to be watching this, but we'd love to see you there. You have a fantastic day and we will see you in the gift. Bye-bye.